Hi everyone, it's uh, Saturday the 14th of May and it's 8.20 in the evening. Right, so for this video I've got an update on the model railway. Yep, it's been, I don't know what, a year since I last did any videos regarding the model railway. So I thought, as I've acquired yet a few more bits, just a few more uh, trackside vehicles, <coughs> excuse me, I might have to squeeze past you in a minute and just get a drink. Um, plus I decided I, I'm going to change the track plan and I would like some input on that. I would like uh, your opinions. I thought I would uh, do a quick little video. So first, let's just have a quick look at the vehicles I acquired last weekend. So, <clears throat> last weekend I went to, I suppose you could call it a classic car show. They had motorbikes and scooters and mopeds and an auto jumble and all sorts there. It was awesome. It's actually held at the Skyton Go at Skyton here in Norfolk. It's an annual event, although for the last two years they had to cancel it for obvious reasons. <clears throat> um, but I do enjoy going and I do enjoy seeing all the old classic vehicles and whatnot. But I also enjoy going around the auto jumble particularly this year because there was a lot of sellers selling a lot of die cast so not only did I manage to uh, increase my collection again but I did find some um, trackside vehicles which are sort of in this little area here apart from that one I've, this one I've had in a box for about a year and I opened it today for this video because I don't think I've ever showed it to you and found that the headboard here was snapped off so I'm going to have to super glue that back on. I don't know if it snapped off when I unboxed it. I wasn't heavy handed when I unboxed it so I don't know. Anywho, I didn't get very many. I only got four, six in total but I do like what I managed to pick up. Um, and this, believe it or not, was only two pounds. I couldn't believe um, how cheap a lot of people were selling die cast at this auto jumble, to be honest. It's cheaper than what you can get them at at a car boot. Although, having said that, with the last few car boots I've been to, they've been pretty cheap as well. Right, <clears throat> so I'm going to start with this Corgi Green Goddess, which is actually different to my other one, which I believe is an Atlas. Yeah, it is an Atlas Editions, in that this one's actually got the blue beacon up on the roof. The wood on the top here is actually a lighter colour. Um, now this doesn't have, you know, the um, Royal Navy, Royal Air Force, I can't remember what it was now, down the side, it's got no writing or anything on it, but it has got the orange stripe. Now the other one I got, the Atlas Editions, is a darker green than the other one. In fact, I think Corgi's is a closer green to the military green than this one. Unless there was a few variations out there, depending on what base it was at. It's got darker wood up there. I'm guessing that could have varied on the real things as well. And the other difference is, no blue beacon. There is actually a little nub there, like there was meant to be a beacon there. But this has got the bell, which hasn't been painted. Yet on the Corgi one, the bell is a lot more detailed. Uh, in fact, there's more detail on the back here as well. Although, having said that, the Atlas Editions has got a number plate on the back. The Corgi one doesn't. It hasn't got a front one either. And the Atlas one has got a front one. I mean, they're both good models. These ladders are slightly different. And I've just noticed... The end of my ladder has actually got broken on this. I bet that's when I knocked them all off the shelf. Because this one usually lives on the shelf in the um, lounge. And that one got knocked off. Along with my Dennis RS, which is why I've no longer got any mirrors. In fact, the mirrors are on here. I'm going to try and glue them back on. At some point, with the aid of a pair of tweezers. Yeah, that's a shame. Ladders are a bit different. In fact, I think the one on the Corgi is probably a bit more realistic to the scale, to be honest. 
What do you guys think? I don't know. I think... I think I've got to lean towards the um, Corgi, to be honest. I think the Corgi is based on a later version of it as well, because it's got the um, turn signals on the side here and the extra tail lights and whatnot, whereas this one doesn't. And originally, this wouldn't have had a blue beacon on it anyway. <clears throat> yeah, but there's no turn signals or anything marked on this one. It's only got these two tiny little rear lights on the back. I don't know if you're going to see them. So maybe that's it. Maybe that's the Corgi one. It's just based on a later model or a later version of it. Well, it may have been uh, updated to have the indicators and the blue beacon and whatnot. Anywho, I think this was, yeah, this was only £2 as well. <clears throat> for a, um, what was it, a blue circle cement truck. And I believe blue circles still exist. Now, when I bought that, I was actually trying to figure out if it was actually 176 scale, but going with this one, which is a Corgi track side, 176 scale as well, they are the same size truck, so, yeah, I'm a bit miffed at that. <laughs> oh well, it'll glue back on. Can I actually um, take the body off of this? Is it screwed on? Oh, it is. Ah. Is that a screw hiding under that axle? No. Ah, that might be a bit of a pain. I was hoping I could unscrew this body and then it'll be easier to glue it on. I think what I'm going to have to do is sort of put the glue on there and then kind of wiggle it in place and just hold it there like that until the glue is set. I think that's all I can do with that. Yeah, I'm not going to do that tonight though. I have to be a Monday job because I'm not going to be able to do it tomorrow. Although I could do it tomorrow morning if I feel like it. Anywho, I did get for three pounds each four more little cars. I've got a nice, very nice Ford Capri with a matte black hood. Um, I think it's a Mark II because it's got the round headlights, not the square. And I believe the square headlights was the first one, the Mark I. Correct me if I'm wrong. I could be wrong on that one. So it's got round tail lights as well. Um, I also got, which I think is actually one of my favourites, the little Mark III Tina. And to go with that sort of time period, still Rover P6. In snot green. <laughs> and to go up to the 1980s, a Mark III Ford Escort Essex police police car. And I want to get the larger scale models that are done in this one. I know Corgi do a bigger scale. And I believe... <coughs> my voice went a bit squeaky there. I believe that is it for vehicles. Right, I'm just going to pause you for a minute because I do need a drink. So, be right back. Right, got me drink. I've already popped it open to save you the save your ears from the hiss as they open up. Ooh, that's better. Right. Um, <clears throat> my stepdad, he's got some um, directional lighting. I don't know if it's for a specific locomotive. I can't remember what he said now. Um, but it's for a DC setup, which is what I use. Um, so he's going to give me that. And uh, when I go over, which should be tomorrow afternoon, I've got to take this because he's buying this off of me. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what he wants to do, because he's got one of these, which he bought at the um, Model Railway exhibition as well. He paid 20 quid for it. Which was cheap. It didn't have the coaches. It was just the powered end and the dummy end. But it ran. And just like my one here, his was missing the um, coupling hooks, which didn't bother him because he's changing them anyway. I think he can change them on these. Um, <clears throat> but what he wants to do now is 
to have both ends motorised. So he asked if I um, want to get rid of mine, and I thought, well, I've only got this random buffet car, which I can't remember where I got it from. Which I think, looking at it, is a Mark II. Going by the windows, it's a Mark II. And as that's what he's running, I thought, you can have that as another spare one. But I'm not going to need it. And I also thought, you know, I can buy another one of these complete in the future. As and when I want another one, so, yeah, I'm going to sell that to him. It does work. I've, just, I've had it going around the track. Um, but the other one I've got is this one in the Swallow li um, livery. Um, which also works. But I've got all the coaches and everything with that one, so I didn't want to get rid of that one. <clears throat> in fact, I'd completely forgotten I hadn't got any coaches for this. Not to worry, like I said, I'll just buy a complete one in the future. The other thing it's going to do is modify the ring field motor. So he said it didn't matter if it didn't work. <clears throat> he just needed one, you know, with that particular motor in it. Because he wants to um, do the CD drive upgrade, CD drive motor upgrade on the ring field. Um, I don't know if that's any more reliable, but it'll probably be a darn sight quieter. Let me just put this on the track and show you what I mean. In fact, I did swap the motors <laughs> between this one and my other one. But this is why. <clears throat> yeah, ring fields have a habit of doing that. But the one that was in here originally was a lot quieter, which is why I swapped it. Because I thought, well, if he's going to do that CD drive motor upgrade anyway, it's not going to matter if it makes any noise, is it? Because he's changing it. So he might as well pull this one apart. And I might as well keep the quieter one. <clears throat> so that's exactly what I've done. So I've got to keep those to the side. Mustn't forget those tomorrow. Um... Yeah, you might have noticed I've got a load of my um, scale vehicles out on the table at the moment. I just want to get them all together just to see what I've got. And I've actually, some here I'm not sure if they are the right scale. <clears throat> they look they look close enough anyway. Like this little Mercedes, I think this one actually is, I think it is an Oxford. Or, I can't quite see it. I haven't got my glasses on so it's not a lot of help. And I know there's some there that aren't quite the right scale but they're sort of close enough. <clears throat> yeah. I'm not looking forward to gluing these mirrors back on the um, Dennis. <laughs> um, you know I've got short sausage fingers and I've got to try and glue that. I might have to try it with a pair of tweezers. I think that's going to be the easiest option actually. Right, the track plan, that's the next thing. So, ever since I built this, what, a couple of years ago now, I have never been 100% happy with it. That's one of the reasons I'm, I've not got as far as putting the ballast down. I have got some ballast that I can put down, you know, to make a start, but I didn't want to do that in case I want to change the track, track plan. I want to be 100% happy with it before I did anything like that. And before I start, you know, putting in homes and roads and things, um, the bit I'm really unhappy with is the sidings and everything. I really do not like that layout. Um, what I like to do is, where the engine shed is, I want that up this end. So as the trains come off the points up there, they go straight into it. The only problem there is, because I've got the point which then goes into the crossover track, so the trains on the outside track crosses over the inside one into the sidings, sort of shunts everything up this way a bit, which doesn't, it doesn't give me a lot of room to play, if you see what I mean. I mean, 
that's quite a long engine shed as well. So I've ran a few ideas through my head and one of them is to um, just have this outer circle as a separate track, separate from everything else, so I can just run whatever I want on this one when I'm bored. Um, so I do away with that point section and uh, move it to the inner circle which would then um, become the main line I suppose. I think I could possibly get the track a little bit closer on the curves the inside one a bit closer to the outside one I'm not sure if I actually need to I'm not sure if that's going to improve anything but I, I'm pretty certain I could um, I might struggle running my large locos on this middle one though because of the tighter curves but I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue really I know my 33 like this one here goes around the inside one fine um, I suppose if it does play up I could change this these set curves to flexi track and uh, try and get the curves not so tight um, yeah I think that's, that's the idea I'm leaning towards I don't know, I've just, I've just never liked how it sits at the moment. And I'd have liked it so I had, like I said, the trains that come off the point on the inside track, down, it splits into two to go into the railway shed, probably another point to have a siding or two, down the side of the shed, perhaps one coming off at an angle or something, with a curve in it, so I've got at least two sidings and that is it. And then the rest in this area could be you know, built up as a little village. <clears throat> so yeah, the station I'm going to leave where it is. Oh, my roof has got damaged a little bit there and I've lost some chimney pots as well from the looks of it. I might have to make some more. I'm guessing that was when this was up and I was crawling down the back there to actually get a traffic cone. That's what it was. Because I did a trade with one a while back. And I know I knocked into this and I know I knocked into this one. In fact, that train shed, I think, is actually loose. Yeah, that did get loosened. Which, as I plan to move it anyway, that doesn't matter. Yeah, but uh, I'm also open to ideas. I mean, like I said, I'm actually happy with the loops as they are at the minute, and I would like to leave them that way if I could. But with how that is set up over there, it's going to be difficult. Um, and I actually quite like the idea, I don't know what you guys think, I know I'm repeating myself here, but I do like the idea of having this one as a separate track, just to run some random stuff on, and then have everything else running on the middle one, including everything on the sidings. <clears throat> well, the other way I could have done it is... Um, just do away with the inside one and just have the main loop. Um, but then I'd have to figure out a way, if I wanted to, how to keep all the sidings isolated from the main loop. So I could actually, you know, use them separately if I want to shuffle things around in the yard while I had a loco going around track. I don't know. I'm just I need some ideas. <clears throat> so um, yeah if you've got any ideas please leave them in the comments below. I'm all ears or eyes in this case. Oh. Cobwebs all over it as well. Look at cobwebs up in the corner. I'm gonna have to decobweb I think. I suppose, when I'm next free, I should start pulling up all the sidings. That would be the first place to start. It would be nice to get these um, buffers to work on the end. Of the you can't see it. Hang on. Get some 
get some more of these buffers with the um, LED indicators on. Now they both should work. But I have noticed that one on the siding over there. That should light up, but it isn't. Even when I flick on the switches, it's, uh, it's not doing anything. <laughs> New. Right. It was working. I don't know why it's not working now. Unless a wire's come off somewhere. It might come off. Right. I'm going to leave the video here then. So, uh, oh, that's better. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. As I said, any comments and ideas, thoughts, please put them down below and uh, I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.